Well, I thought I would cap off the Shiva Panchakshara Stotra series with a video on the pronunciation of the Shiva Panchakshara mantra, since, after all, the whole prayer is for the glorification of this very powerful and extremely auspicious mantra. So the TLDR or the TLDW too long didn't watch, <laughs> is this. Aum Namah Shivaya. Now, if you got that, that's all you need to know. <laughs> but if you want to hear the more detailed explanation, I've got a detailed explanation and a more detailed explanation, okay? So first, let's take a look at the mantra broken into three words. Aum, Nama, Shivaya. Now, you know, Sanskrit has meter. It's not like an ordinary language. It's poetry. So it has a specific rhythm that it has to be pronounced yet. Now, we went over Aum back in the Mandukya Upanishad series. But briefly, I go over it again. Aum is a combination of three transcendental letters. A, U, and N, the nasal M, each one of which gets one beat. And then the dot, the bindu, is a moment of silence, which only gets half a beat. So Aum altogether gets three and a half beats. And there's a moment of silence at the end. The silence symbolizes Turiya. So Ah is waking consciousness. U is dream consciousness. Svapna is Sushupti, deep sleep, or Nirvana. And finally, the dot, Bindu, is just a half a beat of silence. And this is when you go into samadhi. If you're chanting Om properly, uh, you go into samadhi during that half beat. And then you come out again. <laughs> because you will, right? Samadhi is temporary. Enlightenment, however, is permanent. And chanting Om is a great help to reaching enlightenment or realizing enlightenment. So, what about the next word? Namah. Notice at the end, there's a silent aspiration. See, this is called visarga. Visarga is the two dots, like a colon in Roman characters, but it's not a colon. It's a visarga. <laughs> it's a case ending for, ver or for nouns, and for verbs, it's a declension. So in this case, it's a case ending of nama. Namaha. Right? Now, the visarga is pronounced when it is at the end of a line. When you see the double vertical lines, that means the end of the line of Sanskrit. When you see a single vertical line, that means the line is continued. Okay? So... As far as the meter is concerned, it may be on the phys next physical line in the manuscript, but as far as the meter is concerned, it's still part of the same metrical cycle. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> but anyway, each letter of Sanskrit has one beat if it's short and two beats if it's long. So... The Visharga is considered a letter. If you recite the Sanskrit alphabet, it's a, a, e, e, u, u, ri, ri, a, i, au, ng, aha. The aha is Visharga, Visharga. 
So it takes up one beat. It's a short Visarga. There's a long Visarga too, but let's not get into that. Okay, the short Visarga takes up one beat just like a short vowel. So it's Nama. It's not pronounced because it's not at the end of a line. Okay? But it does take up a beat of the metrical cycle. So this is why it's wrong to pronounce the mantra Om Nama Shivaya. And it's correct to pronounce the mantra Om Nama Shivaya. See? Aung. Let's, let's work it out in terms of beats, okay? Aung is three and a half beats. Aung. And then the half beat of silence. But Nama is three beats. Na, Ma, Then Shivaya is one beat for the shit because it's short, two beats for the Va because it's long, and one beat for the final Ya. Shivaya. So the whole thing together is Aung. Nama Shivaya. Aum. 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 Nama. When you're chanting with your beads, you're not going to do it so slow, and you're not going to be so concerned with the metrical purity, right? But since the metric accents and so forth are part of the expression of the mantra or any Sanskrit poetry, uh, in fact, I would say that um, one-third of the expression comes from the meter. Different meters have different meanings and different moods. It's a deep science. Uh, one-third is from the tune that the Sanskrit is sung or chanted in. And another third is from the text itself. So the meaning, especially the emotional meaning of any mantra or any Sanskrit text is inextricably bound up with the rhythm. Okay? The rhythm and the melody. Huh? Like if I was to chant, Aum Namah Shivaya, that's a whole different mood than Aum Nama Shiva See? It's a different mood. Not better or worse, just different, depending on your taste. So anyway, the rhythm remains the same. Now, I know <laughs> I've done so many renditions of this mantra to different rhythms taking some artistic license because it's music, <laughs> right? I've got something like, I don't know, 25 or 30 of them that I use in various videos uh, as a lead-in, theme song type thing. Well, a lot of those are not strictly correct by Sanskrit meter, right? So uh, let's take those with a grain of salt. Don't use them as an example Unless, you know, you want to, if the tune gets catchy and gets stuck in your mind and you want to repeat the mantra to that tune, that rhythm, that's okay. That's okay. Shiva is, you know, <laughs> Shiva is cool. <laughs> Rudra is hot, but Shiva is cool, way cool. So, if you want to chant rhythmically, metrically correct Sanskrit, Keep listening. <laughs> I'm going to get into it a very detailed way. Okay. So, ah, bu, la, na, ma, shivaya. Aum, na, ma, shivaya. Aum, na, ma, shivaya. Aum, na, ma, shivaya. 
Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shiva. See, the whole thing will fit in either 9 or 12 if we bend it just a little bit, right? If you do it strictly, analyze it strictly, it's a 11 beat rhythmic cycle. But like, who can count 11 beats, you know? So in practice, it's always going to slip either to 9 or 12. Om, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. That's nine. Or Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shiva. You see? When we're doing the mantra fast in Japa. So that's okay. That's okay. Because what is the purpose of the mantra? But to stimulate you to think of and visualize Shiva. And over time, that leads to building up a relationship with Shiva. I'll never forget, my Adi Guru was talking about bhakti. And he said, bhakti is something very surprising. He said, bhakti is developed by hearing. Who you hear from and who you hear about, you will automatically over time develop love for them. And if any of you who have seriously practiced a mantra will find that this is true. Like once you've chanted the mantra for, I don't know, a few weeks or a few months, you start to inexplicably love it. I mean, that's the only thing I can... The only way I can describe it, you develop an affection for the sound itself. And of course, because the whole potency of a mantra is that it symbolizes or refers to the meaning, you know, refers to something outside the physical universe. This is spiritual love. This is transcendental love. This is real bhakti. So by hearing about and of Shiva in any way, shape, or form, by reading the scriptures, hearing lectures, watching videos, chanting mantras, uh, doing pujas, where, which of course mantra is an integral part of, and so on, you over time will develop a love and affection for Shiva in a certain mood. And we've gone over this before, the five moods huh, are neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parenthood, and conjugal love. Conjugal love is very secret. Um, now, the, well, the Krishna consciousness movement, you know, despite all the problems <laughs> with it, has brought out something very significant, which is a context in which it's possible to explain conjugal love of the Godhead in terms of, you know, Krishna consciousness and the gopis and Madhurya Rasa and all that. But why can't the same type of relationship exist with Shiva? Well, of course it can. And this is the final blooming, uh, or even, even better, the fruit of the chanting of these mantras is that it develops from neutrality in the beginning, I'm chanting this mantra because, you know, Dave said so. <laughs> or somebody, or some scripture, or whatever. Uh, well, that's okay. That's neutrality. And then servitorship is, I'm going to chant this mantra every day, a certain regulated amount. Friendship is, boy, I sure like chanting this mantra. <laughs> and you do it spontaneously. <clears throat> Parenthood is when you take some responsibility and you say, I'm going to spread the chanting of this mantra as far as possible all over the world to all different kinds of people. That's what we're doing here. And finally, <laughs> conjugal love is in the private ecstasy of a tantric relationship with the Supreme, which is a very deep subject, and we're going to get into that in our dream time series coming up. So please stay tuned with us and 
chant that mantra. Om Namah Shivaya.